It is time for Double Points Racing here at the Mosport International Raceway. Lev Azarov took the Prolapse Pole Award in the rain-soaked qualifying session, and he will be awarded 40 bonus points as opposed to the usual 20. Azarov has yet to lead a lap this season, and with the rain not letting up for the race itself, he's going to have a tough time staying up front with all the road ringers behind him. And now we take you trackside, out into this downpour for the start of the Duck Roll Tires 150. The pace car leaves the field in the hands of Lev Azarov as he leads the field through turn 10. Green flag is out, and it looks like Winston Orwell got on the gas much, much better. And he pulls away from Lev Azarov, taking the early lead, heading into turn one. Riley Knight and Lucas Sweeney, the Pearson Sweeney teammates, dueling. And now Knight coming past Lev Azarov for second. Looks like we're fairly clean so far. And Azarov going off the road, losing even more ground. So again, Lev Azarov has not led a lap all season. And he's going to have to wait a little bit longer for that opportunity. But Winston Orwell doesn't lead for very long. Spinning off in turn five. I don't think I need to explain that asphalt is slippery when wet. And this... Gives the lead to Riley Knight, but now she goes off the road and into the wall. Lucas Sweeney now taking over the lead. Trek Togger sliding into second. And we got a couple cars sliding off behind them. Into turn nine, it's Bob Steffens, the points leader, coming into this race. And he had a little help into the wall from Winston Orwell. So both of these guys losing a ton of spots. Bob Steffens cannot afford to have anything bad happen in this double points race. So he soldiers on, but we got Zavala in the wall and Steffens runs right into it. So Bob Steffens gets into two accidents, a thousand feet apart, and he's going to become the first car out on the first lap. A huge, huge blow for Steffens' championship effort. And I dare say this, is, this could be even bigger than when Rick Forrest Fell out of the points lead upon failing to qualify for a race. Your top two have now spun off the road in turn five. You know, we're taught as children that sharing is caring, and it's so nice to, to see that that lesson has stuck with these drivers through all these years as they uh, share the lead with each other in the opening part of this race. But Lucas Sweeney immediately runs down his teammate as they come out of the long back straightaway. So perhaps for the second week in a row, Lucas Sweeney looks to have the dominant car as he attacks around the outside, but Riley Knight is going to lead the lap. Sweeney not giving up, staying on the outside of Riley Knight as they head into turn one. He sticks that back end way, way out, but keeps the car under control. Sweeney takes the lead back from fellow Trans Am regular and hometown hero Riley Knight, but for how long? Sweeney going off the road. Riley Knight staying on the preferred line. That is anywhere on the asphalt. Sweeney trying to get that car back on the road and back under control, but no, he just shoots across the track and hits the wall on the other side. He's gonna give up second to Trek Togger. Apparently, Lucas Sweeney is trying to take care of that little problem he has where his car is so much faster than everyone else. But now he's gonna take advantage of both his rivals going off the track and that advantage completely disappears as he slides off in turn nine and smacks that wall hard. Ooh, his car is looking a bit stuck there. He's trying to throw it into reverse and get it back going, but it's just stalled out on him. But he eventually gets the car refired and into the pits for some much needed repairs. Riley Knight in car number 08, back into the lead, trying to get around Mark Thompson's Thompson almost wipes out the 08. I'm sure his uh, teammate Trek Togger wouldn't have minded that, but Riley Knight keeps it under control. And now Trek Togger is going to go off the road, trying to get by his teammate. He spins that car out into turn 10. It looks like he's making his way for the pit lane. Ooh, that would have ended embarrassingly if he was just a couple feet further to the right. But Trek Togger's definitely got some damage that he needs to get repaired. And he's going to have to come all the way back around to make his way into the pit lane. Winston Orwell finds himself off the road once again, spinning out into turn five. 
Orwell's managed to hang on to sixth after a disastrous first lap, but now he's lost that spot to Billy Ray Smith Thompson. But fortunately, that's the only spot he loses this time around with the field getting spread out at this point. Riley Knight sacrificing quite a bit of her gap over the rest of the field to go play in the dirt. Uh, Todd Stater in the 66 is a lap down. And Austin Howard really misjudges his breaking point, smashes into the back of Timothy Ruiz. So Austin Howard, who was running in 13th, is gonna have to pit that 62 car. He's not gonna go out of the race, but the M&G crew will have to remove that hood. And it looks like they're gonna have to wait another lap to do so as Howard misses the pit lane. Riley Durbin and Liam O'Connor now getting, getting together, taking each other into the wall. Looks like Durbin was reacting to Howard coming back onto the track, but they all keep going. But just ahead of this, Rick Forrest is looking to have a very, very big day with his main championship rival out of the way early. But in order to do that, he's going to have to go 38 laps in this weather, trying to avoid caving into the peer pressure of the guys who are crashing around him. But he's been doing very well in this first stint, making his way up to sixth and battling with defending series champion Chuck Johnson. Rick Forrest has definitely gotten his act together very quickly when it comes to road racing. After uh, failing to qualify for the first road race of the year, banging doors a little bit with Chuck Johnson. He's just gonna slide off the road, but he's gonna keep it off the wall and rejoin the track. As Chuck Johnson drives away from the 60, Timothy Ruiz coming up, looking for a spot as well. Second place, Zach Webster gets stuck behind the 30 of Tristan Kristoff, and Lev Azarov takes the position without hesitation. Azarov has made a nice recovery after his sketchy first lap. And as for Zach Webster, it seems like road courses were the only thing he was good at last year. His best finish of the year came at Watkins Glen with a third place finish, but he's really picked it up again this season and he's retained the skills he's learned on the road courses. Lucas Sweeney remains in 20th place, uh, trying to recover from throwing his car around like a madman in the opening laps. Lucas Sweeney, the American born son of British two-time Fark Series champion, Paul Sweeney, has always had an affinity for the road courses despite growing up racing modifieds in the Northeast. He even has a Fark win at Watkins Glen in conditions like these. But in the last couple of years, he's moved his way over to Trans Am Racing and has made a name for himself over there. But he's about to become known as the guy who put John Burr in the wall in lap eight if the double zero doesn't get out of the way. Is this a replay? No, this is Winston Orwell going off the track again. And spinning out, sitting in the middle of the track, but he gets it going right right as uh, Samus Rourke in the six descends upon him. Luke DeSweeney hits the pit lane again at the end of lap eight, but it looks like this was planned. The leaders are going to have to make their first stops of the day shortly as well. Zach Webster also pitted at the end of lap eight from third. Clean stop for the 41 team. Lap 10, Riley Knight has yet to pit and now she's messing around with some of the lapped cars, really trying to get Wes Murray in the 53 out of the way. Riley Knight, one of the more noticeably aggressive racers we've seen in the past few weeks. She put herself in the wall at Duluth in the first couple of corners trying to fight her teammate for the lead but Knight maintains her lead as she comes into the pits on lap 11. Billy Ray Smith Thompson, the veteran short tracker, has taken to this whole rain racing thing pretty well. He's made his way up to third before making his pit stop. Chuck Johnson looks to be staying out on the track longer than anyone else. Maybe by staying out longer, he'll be able to shorten the number of stops he'll have to make, but he's definitely gonna grab some bonus points for leading a lap. But you see the pace he has to maintain as Lucas Sweeney unlaps himself. Chuck Johnson fi finally into the pits at the end of lap 13. He came into this race eighth in the point standings. And after pit stop cycle out, you're gonna see the lead that Riley Knight has. There she goes right now. And it's going to be several lapped cars in between her and second place. Here comes Truck Togger. He's that purple car that's gone off the road. 
He's running second right now. In third place is gonna be Liam O'Connor. He's that car stuck behind the hoodless 54 of Gary Miles. So this field has gotten very spread out with a distinct lack of yellow flags. Zach Webster has had to pit again on lap 15. Some mechanical issues have forced Zach Webster in for a second time. And now he's gone a lap down. There's Trek Togger in the 74. Even more problems for Winston Orwell as he spins, trying to make his way into the pits. Oh, and now he's smashed into the end of the pit wall and collected Wes Murray in the 53. I think that's Lucas Sweeney who's spun out in the background. Winston Orwell had a great race for the first four corners, and now it mercifully comes to an end. Lap 20, just a little past halfway, Riley Knight now slips off the road in one of the fastest corners of the track, turn two. Trying to get back onto the road, but no, she spins across turn three, backs that car into the wall, and Knight just falls victim to her own pace like her teammate Lucas Sweeney. Heavy, heavy damage to that 08 car for no good reason. She still got a sizable lead. You didn't even see second place as she came around, but she's going to have to pit that car for sure. But no, she completely misses the pit entrance, and this is going to cost her even more time as a couple of the lapped cars come around her. Kevin Monroe and Hunter Blaze, they're stuck behind the even more lapped car of John Burr. And Riley Knight's just limping at this point. What a gut-wrenching turn of events for her. She will successfully bring the car into the pits this time around, but she's going to lose a lot of time. And on her way to the pits, she's going to get passed by Trek Togger. Togger for the second week in a row, benefiting from the leader's misfortunes. Definitely a role reversal from last year's race at Road America, where he held the lead but spun himself out. In the final laps, handing the win over to Tristan Kristoff, but now he's the one picking up the pieces. Disaster strikes for Chuck Johnson right after he picks up second place. He's got a big problem with that 46, and he's going to have to limp to the pit lane. That's going to put a dent in his pit strategy of trying to go longer on fuel than everyone else. Looks like Liam O'Connor in the 48 as he heads into the pits is going to pick up second place. Trek Togger, the leader, now makes his second stop of the day. Billy Ray Smith Thompson, now the last hope for Pearson Sweeney Motorsports, misses the pit lane as he tries to make his way in at the end of lap 23. So Smith Thompson is unintentionally going to add a lap to his pit strategy. And it looks like he's going to pick up second after all this. Riley Durbin in the 38 has gotten into another incident. He's hit the end of the pit wall. He was running in fifth, but now he's going to have to come in and get that damage repaired. That's going to set him back quite a bit, but he'll stay in the running. Looks like Rick Forrest is going to cycle into third place after pit stops are over with. He hasn't had the speed to challenge the front runners, and I say that as he runs third. That's how spread out this race has gotten, and he almost got caught up in an accident. Ashley Tucker turns uh, John Helix around, but Rick Forrest hasn't had the speed to challenge the front runners, but he's made his way up to third just by surviving, keeping his car on the road. These double points races could end up being where Rick Forrest really shines. Keep in mind, he won the season opener at Texas World. Riley Knight, after making her pit stop to repair the extensive damage to that 08 car, has not fallen too far back. She's only lost a couple spots, so she's gotta be thankful that this race has gotten so spread out and race control has been miserly with the yellow flags, as they ought to be in a race that is shaping up to be as chaotic as this one. Mariano Zavala in car 61 for MJ Racing is not going to get the chance to defend his win here from last year, and it's going to be because of incidents like that though he is only back to 14th, and he, now he's spun out again right in front of Trek Togger. But Trek Togger's got a big enough lead to where he can, you know, back down and tiptoe around accidents like that. Packer Carroll forced into the pits. He went off in the last corner and couldn't get around Rick Forrest, who was making a scheduled stop. 
So Carroll's going to make an impromptu pit stop. It doesn't really matter for him. He's well off the lead lap at this point. Riley Knight's still running in third, but nowhere near the speeds that she was running when her car was intact. But it's good to see her soldiering on and still running competitively, on paper at least. But it's definitely going to be a tall order for her, or anyone else for that matter, to catch Trek Togger, who, as we approach 10 laps to go, has pulled out to a 45 second lead, and his secret has been keeping the car on the road. In this latter half of the race, he threw it off a couple times early on, but he's really gotten a rhythm going, although he's now gonna drive it off into the grass and into the wall, but most importantly, he keeps it straight and keeps going. But it looks like there's an accident in front of him. A couple cars have gone off. Timothy Ruiz was trying to make it into the pits, but slipped on the apron, collects Packer Carroll. Ruiz running in ninth, now makes a hopeless maneuver to try to pit anyway, but he's gonna have to come all the way around again. Liam O'Connor has been hovering around the top five all day, but regardless, I don't think he's gonna feel too good about being lapped by Trek Togger just now. This is definitely shaping up to look like one of the old school races where you have one guy just take off and leave everyone in the dust. And surviving with your equipment intact was a much greater challenge. Scott Wheeler is gonna run into the end of the pit wall. Kenny George gets collected as Billy Ray Smith Thompson just sneaks by. Now, SWH Racing has put Scott Wheeler in this 51 car for the road races as a ringer, but last I checked, the other teams who hire road ringers have much higher expectations for them than just hoping to win a wildcard spot. Heck, even Team Burr's road ringer, Gary Miles, in that 54 is, uh, running much, much better than Scott Wheeler in inferior equipment. Liam O'Connor running sixth, runs off the road in turn two. Here comes Monica Rook. And we have a battle for position for once. This is for the sixth spot. O'Connor comes back onto the road, trying to fend off the 22. And they're, as they come up on the lapped number 160 of John Helix, O'Connor boxes Rook in behind the 160. And O'Connor is going to safely remain in sixth for now as he pulls away. Monica Rook having a lot of trouble getting by John Helix. And now Billy Ray Smith Thompson, just a bit further up the road, is having trouble getting by the 55 of Barry Spangler. But uh, Smith Thompson takes care of that by dumping the 55 into the wall. Barry Spangler has been poking around the park rings on and off for the last few years, and he's showing why he hasn't gotten a serious ride yet. Riley Knight has made her way up into second for the final stint of this race, but Lev Azarov, the pole sitter, is chasing her down. This is shaping up to be the most exciting battle that we have as we get down to the end of this race. Those two cars are completely banged up. Trek Togger is long gone, but Azarov is putting on a show here. He makes his move, but contact into turn eight. Riley Knight just runs over the 82 and puts him into the wall. With just five laps to go, Lev Azarov makes the move for second, and Riley Knight either just misjudged her breaking point in the heat of the moment, or simply didn't like Azarov's challenge and puts him into the wall. And Azarov tries to make a move for the pit lane, but can't get onto the apron. As Billy Ray Smith Thompson now goes around, he's going to inherit second spot as Riley Knight has to pit for the damage she got. But the 08 crew is going to find a busted radiator and pull Riley Knight behind the wall. Lev Azarov now limping around the track. The Rus Autosport team is done for the day as well. Lev Azarov started on pole, but let the lead slip away in the first few corners, and he's been working to recover, only to get taken out in the final laps. But now Billy Ray Smith Thompson has greatly benefited from that wreck. He's snaked his way into second, and if he can hang on, he will tie his best career finish of second place, which he got at Elko just a week ago. But now Trek Togger 
takes the white flag. Oh, almost getting into a wreck in turn one and dumping the 160 of uh, John Helix. I don't know about you, but I can't think of a more inappropriate time to be wrecking people than when you've got an 80 second lead on the white flag lap. But Trek Togger certainly shows that he's not gonna let anything stop him. He rounds turn 10 and takes the duck roll tires 150, his second win in a row by a massive margin over Billy Ray Smith Thompson. But despite the 80 second margin of victory, that was not a boring race by any means. Truck Togger becomes the first repeat winner of the season. Billy Ray Smith Thompson ties his best career finish and was the only other car to finish on the lead lap. Rick Forrest brought it home in third. So Rick Forrest has very quickly gotten his road course act together and comes home with another very strong finish in the Master Spark 4 crown double points races. Now despite all the chaos we saw, 26 cars still managed to finish the race. Barry Spangler was the last car running, but certainly the biggest name who failed to finish was Bob Steffens finishing dead last after an incident on the first lap of the race. And that will cost him the points lead. In fact, it drops him all the way to fourth. 108 points behind Rick Forrest, who takes the lead back with Zach Webster and Hunter Blaze trailing him. But the lead is not the only spot that's gotten shaken up in the aftermath of this race. Billy Ray Smith Thompson vaults his way into the top five. Chuck Johnson moves up a couple spots into sixth. Lev Azarov jumps into the top 10 despite the late race wreck. And Mark Thompson, who was sixth coming into this race, is now nowhere to be seen after his early exit. Next week, the Farklow Dollar Series returns to traditional short track racing at the Louisville Speedway for the Bluegrass 125. And as always, you'll be able to catch the highlights right here on the FARC Racing Network.